Hello everyone, this is Shane Gibson with RackN, and this is a digital rebar provision image build and image deploy demonstration of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. Okay, first we're going to show you in the Red Hat uh, customer portal, we have a subscription uh, that we've, I've set up and created as a 30-day self-evaluated just for the purposes of this test. And we currently do not have any systems registered to the subscription. So part of the image build process will be registering the machine to the Red Hat subscription manager. And the parts that are necessary to do the image build uh, capture and then subsequent image deploy uh, we're going to take a look at the content catalog components that we need. So the installed pieces that we'll be working with today are the image builder piece. So the image builder piece is responsible for creating a single artifact copy image of the system that's just been built and then staging that on the digital rebar provision uh, file server space. Image deploy is used to actually deploy the image to a new machine. And then we have this Rail 7.7 content, which is what I just finished developing to deploy Rail 7 and also manage the Red Hat Subscription Manager registration activation process. This Rail 7.7 stuff should roll into the OS other uh, community content uh, here shortly when I get done uh, with this demonstration. We're going to be working with two machines today. So the first machine is this machine named Rail Builder. Uh, it's currently uh, sitting here in Sledgehammer and Rail Builder is going to be the machine that we uh, do the actual Rail 7 install with our customized tweaks to it. We're going to capture that image, save that image to the file server space for deployment, and then subsequently we're going to deploy uh, on the machine named Rail Image Deploy, which is this machine sitting here also in Sledgehammer, standing by waiting to do something interesting. So the to customize the content, we have a couple pieces uh, of uh, parameters and profiles that we need. Uh, in this case, we have the Red Hat subscription info for the username and password to be able to manipulate the subscription manager components. And then we also, when we go to deploy the image, we're going to need to tell Image Builder how to do that. And we'll have to modify this image URL when we get to that point uh, with a correct image. Speaking of the image, we have on the file server staged here, so files, uh, images on the file server. Uh, let's refresh this to show uh, there is no rail image here. This is where the image will be uploaded once it's done and completed for deployment. And that, that path that's here will become the path in the image URL for deploying the image. All right, so what we're going to do is the first workflow we're going to work with is the image builder uh, rail server. So this is the process that uh, actually deploys Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.7 uh, through the rail server 7 install stage, the subscription register stage, add some SSH keys. Uh, we're going to set the runner service or the agent as active in the post installed system. Uh, image Builder itself is the stage that does the artifact creation and, and staging on the DRP endpoint in the file server. So that does the actual capture, roll up, and uh, make it ready for deployment. But we're going to take this actual uh, workflow and we're going to customize it. So what we're going to do is we're going to customize it with this other stage uh, just to show how we can work with workflow to create our sort of pipeline, our CICD pipeline, if you will, of customizing an image. In this case, we're going to do an Ansible install. It's very simple. There's not a whole lot to this. The, the goal is more to show uh, actual use and customization. But the Ansible install stage has this task, uh, which is Ansible install, which just simply does yum minus y install Ansible. Very simple. But this is customizing uh, the workflow. So we're going to come over to the workflow. We're going to do image builder rail server. We're going to clone this and we're going to call it image builder rail Ansible with Ansible. How about that? Sound good? Uh, and then we're going to add the stage Ansible install that we had just created. And we're going to move this up. And we want this somewhere between the Rail Server 7 install and the finish install process. So all of the things that happen in between this is modifying the image that's being deployed to the disk of the virtual machine. So uh, 
and, and it needs to be before Image Builder Linux because Image Builder Linux does the roll up of the, the system as well. So I, I guess it's between steps uh, two and seven in this case. And so we're going to move this up. Uh, yeah, well, that's good. After SSH access, uh, let's give it a industry, I guess. I don't know. Icon. We can change the icon. Sounds good. So now we have this image builder rail with Ansible workflow and we step through and we see here's our customized uh, content that we're going to deploy to the machine. Uh, we're going to come up to the machine, <coughs> select our machine, and we're currently in Sledgehammer and it's ready to go. There, there are no tasks that have executed. The task and runner is in the runnable state or a lot of times we just say it's ready to play or runnable. And so we're going to go to the workflows and select our uh, rail server. Here we go. Rail uh, builder rail with image builder rail with Ansible. There we go. It's a mouthful, right? So now we're kicking off the process and we see the machine has in the background received uh, the command to make the boot and rail server seven install uh, happen. In this process, we're actually using uh, a really cool capability for Linux systems. Uh, we're using the kexec process. So uh, kexec OK is set on the global profile here. So in the global profile with kexec OK, uh, the various boot env boot ems, if they support being able to kexec uh, the uh, kernel to a new in-memory uh, version of the kernel, uh, they can do that without doing a reboot and post. It just makes things a little bit faster, uh, particularly much faster, on uh, physical hardware. Uh, in this case, also, we uh, sort of breezed over the SSH keys. Uh, so here's one of the access keys, my personal uh, public key half, uh, that will be injected in the machine. You could do your Ansible master keys, whatever you want to do here. In this case, I'm going to be using this to show uh, access back to the machine after we've deployed the image. Uh, this process is going to kick off and run for a short bit. Uh, it takes, it's not terribly long, but we're going to let the process run here uh, on the console for a few minutes and we'll fast forward this uh, as it's running in the video. Okay, one of the things I want to show here is the machine has actually activated during the installation an agent and a runner. And one of the uh, tasks that it's executing is the registration Red Hat subscription network task is running. I also have the RS debug enabled flag here, so we're getting a lot of debug information back from the process. But if we just briefly see through here, uh, we can see it's actually doing the subscription uh, process of attaching and registering the machine. And then it's also going to do uh, set up some of the repos as defined by the uh, Red Hat subscription uh, repos parameter, which defines what repos I want turned on. One of those repos is the Ansible repo. It's also going to do uh, make cache, and that takes a really long time. For some reason, the Red Hat RPMs, uh, Rails 7 server extra RPMs packages, or maybe it's the one of the other ones, maybe it's just the rail server seven RPMs. It's like 300 some megabyte size uh, package repo that it has to download. And that's kind of slow. So it takes a little while to run uh, as it's running through the yum uh, minus y make cache here. So we'll let it run there and then we'll zip forward here in the video for a minute as well. Okay, so the image process has completed. And if you're watching the screen just a few seconds before I started talking, you'll have seen that the uh, image capture process uh, task was running. And what we need to do while that's rebooting in the background is go to the job log. And we want to grab the job log for the image capture. And we'll see that here is the actual capture process. And it uh, we've tagged the image with this E75B36CC6E. Uh, uh, CC6 e. Uh, name and the actual image tarball is right here. So this is what we need. And we should see that now if we refresh. There we go. So there's our rail tarball. We're going to copy that uh, address, go back to the machines, and on the image deploy machine we're going to edit the image deploy profile and change the uh, URL reference to our image. So now we're pointing at this rail E75 image that we're going to deploy. 
And for giggles, let's just go ahead and change our icon uh, purple so we know it's a little different. Well, I guess it's not so much different because I've been using purple a lot today. <laughs> In any case, uh, rail image uh, deploy is the machine. So remember, we had image deploy sitting here in the sledgehammer and we are going to now kick off the image deploy uh, workflow on the machine and then let it rip. Now for the keen eyed of you out there, you may have noticed that I've switched the machines uh, for the target that we we're planning on deploying. Uh, the machine that I was originally planning on deploying is running a goofy UEFI uh, firmware that I was playing around with in KVM and it doesn't play nicely with the Red Hat image so I switched over to a virtual machine uh, .16 here and renamed it to rail image deploy as well that has uh, legacy firmware in it that is much more successful at deploying the image. And so uh, again, here we are in Sledgehammer and we're going to set the image deploy workflow uh, on this machine and it should kick off in the background and start the deployment process of loading the new image that we've just subsequently created through the image builder rail with Ansible workflow. We'll let that run and then we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so the machine has deployed the image to the system and kexec OK is kexecing into the newly installed uh, instance and it bootstraps up and we see we've got image identity E75B3 blah 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 installed on the machine. And to test it out we're going to uh, first remove any keys I have installed for this machine uh, or collected for this machine and then we're going to SSH to this machine. So we're going to use the uh, private key that I set up for this uh, demo which the public key half is in the global profile for SSH keys. Log into the machine. Oh right, silly me. We have to log in as cloud user. Uh, and then we sudo to root. And we're now in the rail image deploy. If we cat uh, Etsy OS release, we'll see that we're running uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux server. And uh, if we cat uh, Etsy Oh, I don't remember. If we Oh, I guess I don't create a signature file in, with a, a release signature file for. Um, here we go. Etsy issue contains the identity uh, fingerprint from the deployment. But we also can see Etsy yum.repos.d uh, Red Hat repos. So all the repos were installed. And then if we do yum repo list enabled, we'll see that the I thought it was enabled. It is enabled. We just uh, don't put a dash dash on front of it. So yum repo list enabled. There we go. <laughs> we'll see the appropriate repos that have been installed. Uh, specifically what we're looking for is the Ansible repo uh, which should be listed in here. Gosh that takes a long time. Let's come on. You can do it. You can do it machine. Chug 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 chug. And there's our uh, Ansible. Where did it go? Here we go. Ansible repos. And if we do Ansible version we have our Ansible install. So there we go. Uh, from beginning to end, uh, creating a Rail 7.7 server with customization to install Ansible uh, 2.8, uh, 
deploy a new version, customize it, subscribe the machine to Red Hat Subscription Manager, create a single artifact copy of the uh, Red Hat machine, capture that copy, uh, that single artifact, and stage it on the DRP instance. And then we do a subsequent deploy of that image to a new machine for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. All right, thank you very much. This is Shane Gibson with Rackin. Look forward to seeing you on another demo video series soon.